Hi everybody, welcome to the assignment walkthrough for Watts 1020 Introduction to Programming in JavaScript, uh, the Flickr search assignment. So in this assignment we're going to play with asynchronous data and we're going to get that data from Flickr uh, which is the popular photo sharing website and in order to do stuff with this data we're going to um, use JavaScript and we're going to allow users to conduct a search and will return images based on a search of the Flickr public feeds API and will display some information about images and um, and then uh, allow them to see the images so here for example is what this uh, page looks like by default and if I search for dog my solution in place and I search for nothing and I get just the public feed if I search for dog I get pictures of dogs if I search for cat I get pictures of cats you notice that my page is not changing at all up in the location bar I can search for rainbows I can search for rainbows and kittens using a comma separated list Although really, if I just do rainbows and kittens, it works pretty well that way too. It will show me different things. So, more though if I use the commas like I'm supposed to. So, <laughs> so this, is, uh, this is basically just a really simple interface to what's called the Flickr Public Feeds API. So, let's take a quick look at, at what this is. Um, this is the public feed page for uh, the, the public photos feed and it gives you a URL and if you hit that URL you'll get a response <clears throat> so we can just make a new tab and hit that URL really fast and this is the response that we get and this is formatted by default as an XML response and you can see that XML basically works like HTML it is um, you, you have tags that wrap different content and the tags tell you what the content is. So this is the title. Here's a link. Here's an icon. Here's a subtitle. An updated date. And then we have these entries and content. So in the content we have authors and uh, titles and we have um, all, all these different kinds of things in them. So um, so that's what that that's what that looks like by default. Uh, we obviously want to use JSON and one thing that you'll notice is that here the format the default format is Atom 1.0 which is an RSS format well a, a type of syndication format used that uses XML um, we want to use JSON and if we click over here uh, there's there's a link that they have right here see the feeds page for more feed format information and if we click here to the feeds page you'll notice that we can specify all these different formats. So we have all these different formats of XML, what are called RSS or syndication formats. And then we also have these other feed formats that are different, including PHP, serialized PHP, CSV format, and there's a JSON format. So we want to use the JSON format. And to do that, we're just going to add a little attribute to the end of this, uh, of this URL. So if we take this URL here and paste it up here we get the XML and then if we just add format equals JSON to it then we get that in a JSON format and you notice that this is um, this looks like a JSON object it's an object that would have all of these different attributes so once we get this data back if we can get this into an object format, we'll be able to have a really easy time to just loop through this object and then output whatever information we want the user to see about the about the images. Um, one thing to keep in mind, there is a page about the JSON response format, and it's useful to understand what JSON is. Um, you might consider reviewing at json.org if you want to um, uh, get a better idea of what JSON is. Um, and there are some finer details here. For the most part, we're worried about this kind of big picture structurally, so we're not going to dig too deep into some of these finer details. But if you do run into issues, definitely give a holler 
and, um, and we'll work with it. And one of the ways that we're going to avoid issues is that we're going to follow this example that is provided for us on jQuery's get JSON page. So get JSON is a method that allows jQuery to make an asynchronous request to a server to retrieve some JSON data. So this is basically an Ajax style interaction. Now jQuery does have an Ajax method as well, so you don't want to get confused. The get JSON method only gets JSON data. The Ajax method could theoretically get all different kinds of data and bring it back to you. Um, there are different times and different ways in which you want to use Ajax. So here's an example of an Ajax function and here's an example of a similar get JSON function. So um, so you can definitely take a look at all of these and if you notice if you scroll down to the example you have an example here that loads the four most recent images of Mount Rainier from the Flickr JSON P API. So this JSON P is a way of embedding JSON that gets around the issue of what's called cross domain security or cross origin security. Um, and that's why they use this slightly modified version of this URL. But it, even if I, if I copy and then uh, paste this URL into the web browser, you'll notice that I'll still see um, an XML response here. Uh, but if I add format equals JSON, but if I add format equals JSON, then I can get this JSON formatting. And this is a little bit of a strange way of doing it because essentially what we're saying here is that we don't want any callback. Um, we don't need to mess with callbacks right now. So, uh, there are other ways to try things out and to test things out. So, um, for example, I recommend that you install the Postman REST client into uh, Chrome, and then you can open up this app in Chrome, and you can use it to make API requests against all different APIs. And so I use this all the time when I'm just testing out things, looking for uh, uh, different, um, the way that things are going to work. So here, you notice that I have that same method that I showed you there in terms of adding in the JSON callback and then here it says tags dog and if I scroll down here I I'm getting apparently stuff that has dog tags on it um, I could change this to be tags cat and I would at least expect to see the first thing so the first thing here is DSC 7119 now the first thing here is Milan 2015, La Historia de Chicarito. So this is, um, this is all different data based on the different tag that I'm sending. This is a great way to experiment with the API and get an idea of what data is going to come back. It's important that you understand what data is going to come back so that you're able to, uh, to work with, with it on your page and actually display it. So here... Um, what I've actually done here to get this demo running is I've just plugged in the solution.js file which is supplied and that does show you a complete solution. So if you go in here um, you can see a complete solution to, the, to this problem. It's, it's actually almost complete. It doesn't output all of the different data, data points that you need to output by default, but it does show you how to do both the, the basic solution and then also the stretch solution with um, the modal. So if you get stuck, come and look at, at this solution and, um, and you'll be able to work with it. Uh, if you are trying to you know, uh, strike out on your own, I would start with this example here as your guiding principle. This might seem like it's a whole bunch of cheating, but this is not really cheating. I mean, you, you're going to need to modify the tags that get that get sent based on the user's input. So you're going to have to modify this function. You're going to have to encapsulate this in a different function. And then when you add things in, you're actually going to want to do um, a much different kind of adding things in in order to make, make everything look good and work well with your uh, bootstrap 
template and everything that you have going on there. So, and then also this is this is limiting it to just the first four items, and you want to show more than four items. So by default, a hundred items are going to be returned on each call. So there's a lot of things that you're going to have to do to this, but this does show you the idea that you're going to call get JSON, and part of that get JSON call is to have a done function, which is going to handle the information when it's done. You can also add additional code up before this get JSON so that when the call starts, you do something like maybe show the word loading or something or fetching data. And then when it finishes, um, you're able to do something different all within this done function. So that's where you're gonna, all your modifications to the page are gonna go inside the done function once it's actually received the new data. So this is probably the best place to start in terms of looking at how to get the data transfer going back and forth. Once you have the data transfer going back and forth, it's really just about inserting it onto the page using the same kinds of, of techniques that we've used in uh, for Bootstrap. And then if you want to approach the stretch goals, then you can do something like implement the modal window, which, uh, will allow you to show the images in a larger fashion. You could even do a much better job implementing the modal window. And um, and that would be great too. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts here. You wanna think about each thing sort of piece by piece. Get your data, understand your data, understand that you have your data received and you're able to get new data every time you do a search. Then focus on putting things into the page. And when you put them into the page, just approach it in a very matter of fact kind of way. You're adding um, list items to a list. You're just going to basically uh, wipe out all the content of that list. So you can use the dot empty function and then you're going to add those list items back in. Um, so you're going to do a whole bunch of appending in a loop. Um, this is really not any more complicated than everything else that we've done. We're just uh, combining a few different things again and that's really the challenge of JavaScript is to figure out how you can combine HTML, CSS, and script and different scripts from different places bringing in different kinds of information. How can you make all of that stuff work together? That's really what this assignment is all about. So uh, good luck, have a blast, and uh, I will look forward to hearing from you if you have any issues. Take care. Bye.